After Effects has this cool feature called layer snapping. What it allows you to do is that when you work in the comp panel and you're dragging a layer around, you can have it snap to another layer. And that may not seem like a big deal, but when you're working in 3D space, it's really helpful because when you're trying to connect two layers together so you can have them behave in 3D space in some way, it's really hard to get them to line up. But snapping makes it, well, a snap, right? So to follow along, go to Working Files, go to After Effects Projects, and scroll all the way down here to Snapping. We're going to work in two comps here. In this comp, we're going to make a cube out of those six squares. And the other comp, we're going to work in what's called the Ray Traced 3D Renderer, which is something I've not introduced yet. We'll get to that later in the course, but I want to show you something here where you can bend the letter and have these other guys connect to that bended letter so you get kind of a curving group of letters. We'll go back to squares here. First of all, After Effects has had a snapping feature built in for a long time. The layer snapping mode is something that's new to the most recent version of After Effects. The older way of snapping, which still applies, is you can take any layer here. If I start moving it, hold on the Shift key, it'll stay in its original horizontal and vertical space like that. If I hold on the Control key with the Shift key or the Command key with the Shift key, it'll snap to the edges. You can pull it away like that, but it'll snap when I get close to the edges. So you can align things fairly easily with the Control or the Command and the Shift key. You can also get it to center like this. It will snap to the center when I get inside there. See how it snaps to the center? All right, that's the way things have worked for a long time. But the newest thing is now layer snapping, where you can snap one layer to another. And the way that works is that wherever you hover your cursor inside an object like this, if snapping is turned on, then the closest vertex or the center point will be the magnet, the thing that snaps to some other layer. The keyboard shortcut to turn on snapping is to hold down the Control or the Command key, but I found that it's a little unpredictable, because when you work with the Pan Behind tool, it behaves different than when you work with the Selection tool. So I'm going to show you these methods, but right after that, I'm going to show you how to turn snapping on all the time, and then how to use the Control or the Command key to turn it off temporarily. So I'm going to click away from the square to deselect it. I'm going to hold down the Control or the Command key, and I'm going to click near this corner vertex there. And notice that box that appears there. That is the snapping magnet there. That's the vertex that's going to be the magnet. Now if I go to the right here, I can snap to the edge of that one next to me. Notice the green line that forms there that shows I can slide up and down there. When I get to a vertex, it turns into a double box, saying that I've connected to the vertex there and there. I can connect to the center point as well. See that works? Pretty slick. It'll even be slicker when we start putting this box together in 3D space. So that's how that works. If I want to use the Pan Behind tool, it works a little differently. I'll select the Pan Behind tool here. I want to move the anchor point. The anchor point is currently in the center, so I'll drag it off center. Now that I'm dragging it, I hold on the control of the command key, and now it's going to snap. You can't tell it's going to snap, but when I get to the center, it snaps. If I get to a vertex, it snaps like that. Now, if I hold down the control of the command key before I move it, then it becomes a selection tool and moves the entire box around. So that's the kind of confusing thing when you're working with a keyboard shortcut like this. What I suggest you do is turn on snapping all the time. You do that right here. Just check that little box there, and now snapping is on. So if I grab this with the pan behind tool, it won't suddenly start moving around the entire square. It just moves around the little anchor point there and it'll snap to the center or wherever you move it, which is a good thing. And if I go get the selection tool by pressing V, I get close to this vertex and click. It turns on the little box, lets me snap. And if I want to turn snapping off temporarily, I hold on control or command and I can move the box around freely and there's no snapping. So I think the better way to work is to have snapping turned on all the time. So you can use snapping for the anchor point and for vertices here inside a layer. You can also use it with a mask. I'm going to add a solid layer here, new solid. We'll make it a color that's pretty obvious. Put it right on top like that. I'm going to take the pen tool and draw a quick mask here. And now if I take this guy over here using the selection tool with masking turned down now, I'm going to take this corner right there, for example, click. And now I'm going to snap to the vertices of this mask and also to the border of the mask. Not just to the vertices, but it snaps to the border. But when I get to a vertex, you'll see that it snaps right to that vertex. I can go inside to the anchor point as well. So you can work with masks as well as working with just regular layers like that. All right, let's just get rid of that solid layer for now. So our goal here now is to make a cube. And so I'm going to take my selection tool and start connecting things. So I've got this guy, I'll just drag it like that and he'll snap to him. Got this guy near the vertex, snap, this guy, snap. I want to have this guy snap again, looks like I missed it, there we go. I'm going to take you and snap you on the top there, like so. Take you and snap you over here on the right hand side, see how easy that is. What I want to do now is move the anchor points and I also want to slide these guys around a little bit. So I'm going to connect these guys to this one in the middle. So I'm going to select all of them, top one, shift click on the bottom one, and then deselect that light green one. 
controller command key to deselect it. And deselect the purple one now too. We're going to parent everybody to that guy right there. Parent to light green. And then the purple guy will parent to the dark green. Click away and open up the light green one here. Change its position, press P. We'll slide it to the left and they'll all move along with it. Slide it down a little bit. Now I want to move the anchor point so that they're all along their vertices here. So when we tip them up with a the rotation, they'll all tip in the right place. So we'll get this guy first. Take the pan behind tool, which is this one over here. It'll snap when I grab it, so it'll snap to that vertex. Take this one over here. It'll snap to that vertex. See how easy this is? Snap. Snap. And up here. Now let's put them all in 3D space. So I'll select them all, Control A or Command A for all of them. Click on this little 3D box. They're all 3D now. Close this down like that. I'm going to rotate each one here. So I'm going to go to the red one. Press R for rotation. I want to rotate that on its X axis. So we'll take it like so. Rotate it up like that. And make it 90 degrees. And I can rotate the blue one now. Dark blue. R for rotation for it. Rotate it on its Y axis. I can put it to minus 90 degrees. And the light blue one. Light blue. Rotation to that one. We'll rotate that one on the x-axis like so. And make that minus 90 degrees. We'll rotate the green and the purple one will come along with it because the purple is parented to the green. So we'll go to the dark green bar for it. We're going to rotate it on its y-axis. We'll make it 90 degrees. Let's just take this light green one here. We'll get the light green one here. Open up its rotation. Rotate it on its y-axis a little bit. There's our purple guy right there. So we'll go get the purple one. Press R for it. We want to rotate it on its Y axis. Scroll down a bit here. And rotate it over there like that. And we'll make it 90 degrees. Now we've made ourselves a little cube. Let me just change the opacity on this just a little bit. I'll do Control or Command A for all of them. Press T for opacity. And we'll knock the opacity down a little bit so you can see inside there. We'll click away with the selection tool. So you can see them all. I'll take that light green one, because that's the one that controls everything. Scroll down to the light green one here. And I'll go to you, and I'll say, let's go for a rotation for you. We can start seeing all these guys rotate together. It's so easy now to make this cube. I'm telling you, you may not think this is a big deal, but to put these guys together in a cube like that is a huge deal. To make it all work so smoothly like that and have it go so quickly, that is a really cool thing. And snapping, let us do that. We snapped the vertices, and we snapped the anchor points. All right, let's go over here to this text comp. This text comp will be rendered using the Ray Traced 3D Render. I'll show you how we get there. I'll right click on the text layer. We'll go to Composition Settings. We go to Advanced. Under the Render, it's the Ray Traced 3D Render. The normal one's Classic 3D, but Ray Traced 3D Render is the non default one. We cancel out of that. Once we go to the Ray Traced 3D Render, we can bend things and extrude things. We can extrude text and shapes, and we can bend footage. We can bend layers. We can't bend text. But if we pre comp it, or we take text and nest it in another composition, then we can, then it behaves like footage. So first of all, I want to connect these three guys together. Snapping is on by default. I've got my selection tool. I'm going to grab you like this, go to the right vertex and snap you there. Take this one here, move you around, snap you there as well, like that. Go get my pan behind tool here. Use the pan behind tool to snap these guys to the vertex as well. You two, right to the vertex there. Good, now we're all set up. Let's change the view here from active camera, which is the way that people see this thing, to the custom view. So it's kind of off to the side so you can see it a little bit better. Now I'm going to select the B comp here. And I'm going to show you a little trick here that you can do when you switch to the Ray Trace 3D render. Open this up, and it's going to have geometry options. We can curve it, which is really pretty amazing. So I'll curve it now. See how it pulls back like that? Pulls back in kind of four chunks there. That's because that's how many segments there are. We'll increase the number of segments to make it smoother. And now we'll close that down. Let's rotate the A and the B. So I click on A, go to R for rotation. I want to rotate here on the Y axis. There we go. We'll go to 90 degrees or minus 90. And we'll go get the C now, the letter C. Click on it. Press R for rotation. And we'll rotate that to plus 90 on the Y axis. Type in 90. I want to parent these guys to B. So I'm going to take them and connect C to B and A to B. So now if I go to B, press R for rotation, and rotate on the y-axis, these guys will behave together like this, working as this unit here, this kind of curved group of text. 
What I'm going to do now is go back to the regular view, the active camera view, and I'm going to add a light, which is something else we also haven't discussed yet, but I want to just add a light to show you what you can do when you work in 3D space like this, and you've got these guys kind of curling around at each other. So I'm going to close you down, right-click here, add a new light. Let's take the default settings for the spotlight here, have it cast shadows, click OK. You can see how the light now falls on these guys. Let me double click on this and increase the intensity a bit, make it a little bit brighter. And now I'm going to take that B comp again, press on rotation, and we'll rotate on the Y axis again. We'll see how the light plays off these guys as we move them around. Pretty fantastic. And we were able to set this thing up so easily like this using the snapping feature. I'm telling you, without the snapping feature, it would be tough to get everybody to line up like this. So that's how you use the layer snapping feature.